All right, with this, we're going to look at integration with partial fraction decomposition. Um, let's see, six period, you are unfortunately at a little bit of a disadvantage because we had a period cut short on Wednesday and I didn't have time to go over the basics of partial fractions. So if you need to go through and look at the notes on Thursday for either second or third period, you can see some stuff that we did in that, those classes that may help you looking at this. But I think that watching this will probably be fine. Um, all right, so let's just look at an example of integration with partial fractions. Uh, it's going to be a fraction looking something like this. But, um, of course, I'm not going to dive into partial fractions first. First thing I'm going to look for is whether this is a power rule or a, uh, <clears throat> a power rule or uh, use substitution or something you recognize. We have all these other techniques, but I'm just going to go ahead and save you the agony. None of those will work. So what we're going to have to do is partial fraction decomposition. Um, we're going to start with this fraction. We're going to start by factoring the denominator. Uh, so 1 over uh, the bottom is going to factor what x minus 2, x minus 3. And then what we're going to try to do is find two fractions when added together that will give you this. Uh, since the factors on bottom are x minus 2 and x minus 3, I know those are going to be my uh, my denominators. And then since the original degree of my denominator is 2, that tells me that I will need an A and a B. There's only two letters that we're going to have to solve for, so I'll put an A and a B. And then once you set that up, we will multiply everything on both sides of the equation by the common denominator. So x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 2, x minus 3, and we'll clean that up. On the left side, everything's going to cancel, which is kind of the idea. Multiply by that common denominator, that's all gone. We're left with 1 on the left side. On the right side, x minus 2 is going to cancel with that x minus 2 right here, leaving me with only a and x minus 3. And then I have b times x minus 3 cancels with this x minus 3, and that will leave me with b x minus 2. Um, now what, we, what we're going to do, I like to use a little shortcut. One option is to completely distribute the A and the B and you match up coefficients on both sides of the equation. And that's a, a way that will always work, but it's a little bit more cumbersome. What I like to do is plug in values for X that will cancel either A or B. And I'm going to start with X equals 3. Um, so if I plug in 3 for X, I get 1 equals A times 3 minus 3, which is 0, plus B times 3 minus 2, which is 1. Uh, so I'm really left with 1 equals b times 1, or 1 equals b. Voila, I solve for b. And then I'm going to use the same trick to solve for a, and if I'm going to solve for a, that means I want to get rid of my b term, so I'm going to plug in 2. Uh, so we have 1 is equal to a times uh, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and b is going to be multiplied by 0. 2 minus 2 is 0, so that's gone. And you get a equals negative 1. Uh, now what you want to remember is this isn't the end of the problem. This simply tells you um, what the original um, numerators were over the x minus 2 and the x minus 3. So now that I've done the partial fraction decomposition, or at least the hard part of it, what I'm going to do is take my values of x and I'm going to, or values of a and b, and I'm going to rewrite my integral. And instead of being the antiderivative of all of that, it's now the antiderivative of a, which is negative 1 over x minus 2, plus b, which is positive 1 over x minus 3. And now I've got two integrals that hopefully are going to be a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to split it up into negative 1 over x minus 2, dx plus the antiderivative of 1 over x minus 3, bx. Uh, and then now we try to find these smaller antiderivatives, which hopefully are going to be a lot easier than the one you started with, which they are. Uh, first thing I'm going to do here is there is a negative 1 right here. I'm going to take that negative. I'm going to pull it out and just put a negative out here. So we have negative antiderivative of 1 over x minus 2. 
plus antiderivative of 1 over x minus 3. And now these are like uber sexy. These are great because in both of these fractions, the top is the derivative of the bottom. And if the top is the derivative of the bottom, then you're left with ln of the bottom. Don't forget absolute values, plus C, and there is your answer. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Um, and so that's the idea behind partial fractions. It's instead of having one big, ugly fraction, you'll do the partial fractions to split up the integral into two smaller fractions, and the two smaller ones should be easier than the original one. All right, so let's try another one. Let's try this one. Um, we have the same thing. Uh, have a fraction go through all of your other little techniques, power rule, recognition, natural logs, uh, u substitution, parts. None of those are really going to help us here. So I'm going to um, do our partial fractions. So x plus 2 over, let's factor the denominator. That'll be x plus 2, x minus 9. And I'll be, I wasn't expecting this. I just picked this problem randomly out of a book. But by golly, this is sexy because look at this. x plus 2's cancel. And I'll be, we don't even need partial fractions, do we? Because this whole problem just cleans up to the antiderivative of 1 over x minus 9. Right? Right? Right, which is the natural log of x minus 9, because the top is the derivative of the bottom. Well, wasn't that just nice? Did I factor that right? That was just too clean. Oh, well, it's bad factoring. That should be x plus 9, not x minus 9. What's wrong with me? There we go. Um, 2 plus 9 is 11, right? 2 times 9 is 18. x times x is x squared. That looks good. Um, so that one actually ended up being really nice. I wasn't expecting that. Um, maybe I should start working these problems before I start recording. Hey, that'd be a great idea. <laughs> All right, let's try a different one. Um, okay, here, 2 over x cubed minus 9x. Uh, top is not derivative at the bottom. Nothing fancy is going on here, so I'm going to try partial fractions. If you factor this denominator... Um, you pull out the x, that leaves you with x squared minus 9, but that continues to factor because that's a difference of squares. So x plus 9, x minus 9, which would give you... All right, and let's see, my factoring sucks. That's going to be x plus 3, x minus 3. This is a great example of why you don't skip steps. So you factor out the x, you have x squared minus 9, which factors x plus 3, x minus 3. There we go. Uh, let's see, I have three factors, and that's a good thing because I need three letters, a, b, and c. So this is going to be a over x, b over x plus 3, and c over x minus 3. Um, and then what I'm going to do is multiply everything on both sides of the equation by the common denominator, x x plus 3, x minus 3. And then we start canceling. Here, everything cancels. x, x plus 3, x minus 3, leaving me with only 2 is equal to. And then I've got a times the x's cancel, leaving me with just the x plus 3 and x minus 3. Plus b times the x plus 3's cancel, leaving me with x and x minus 3. And c time, x minus 3 cancels, leave me with x and x plus 3. Uh, so now I get to this point, I start plugging in values of x that will give me zeros. <clears throat> now I'm just going to go from left to right. The first one I see is negative 3. So when I plug in negative 3, I get 2 equals a times negative 3, which is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So that's a 0, plus b times negative 3. And negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6, plus c times negative 3, and negative 3 plus 3, that's 0 also. So that one's going to 0 out. Then we solve the equation. 2 equals 18b. <coughs> and if you divide both sides by 18, you get b equals 2 over 18. But I'm pretty smart. I'm going to call that 1 ninth. So I get b to be 1 ninth. Now I will plug in positive 3. That'll give me a 0 in a different factor. So that gives me 2 equals a times 6, but 3 minus 3 is 0, so I have a 0 for my a. b times 3, and 3 minus 3 is another 0, plus c times. I'm plugging in 3 for x, so 3 times 3. 3 times 6, 
Yep, that would work better. 3 plus 3 is 6. So I get 2 equals 18C, which means C is also 1 ninth. And then I'll plug in, uh, if I plug in 0, I get another 0 over there by the C. So uh, that'll be 2 equals A times 0 plus 3, 0 minus 3. B times 0, and C times 0. So we get zeros for the other two. Uh, 2 is equal to negative 9A, which means A is equal to negative 2 over 9. So we have our A, we have our B up here, and we have our C. And then we roll those three into a new integral. So it's going to be the antiderivative of a, which was over x, so negative 2 over 9 over x, plus b, which was 1 over 9 over x plus 3, because that's what b was over, and c was also 1 over 9 over x minus 3 dx. Um, and then just to go in uh, gory detail, I'm going to split this integral up. So, geez, my integral signs are just painful today. The integral of, that one wasn't too bad, negative 2 ninths over x dx plus the integral of 1 over 9 over x plus 3 dx plus the integral of 1 over 9 over x minus 3 dx. Uh, and then the last step before I actually integrate, this is getting nicer, but those fractions are scary. So I'm going to take these fractions, which are all constants, and I'm just going to stick them all in front of the integrals. So integral, pull out all that, pull out all that, and then we're down to negative 2 ninths times the antiderivative of 1 over x, which that is sexy, plus 1 ninth times the antiderivative of 1 over x plus 3, which is equally sexy, plus 1 ninth, antiderivative of 1 over x minus 3. And then finally, I've cleaned these up as much as they are going to be cleaned up. Ooh, my microphone dipped down there for a second. You didn't lose me. Um, and the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. And the negative 2 ninths in front is just going to come along for the ride. Plus, then I have 1 ninth times. The top is the derivative of the bottom there. So ln of x plus 3 plus 1 ninth times the natural log of x minus 3. Because, again, the top is the derivative of the bottom. Don't forget your constant, plus c. And there we are. Let's see, does all that fit on one page? Ah, pretty good. Pretty good. All right, so there is uh, the answer number three. And that one got a little bit lengthy, and it was kind of ugly because there were fractions for your A, B, and C, but that's fairly common. You're going to run into that, um, I won't say a lot, but enough to where you need to be comfortable with it. And then there is one more problem I wanted to do, 4x plus 4 over x squared plus 2x minus 35. And we go through all of our normal stuff. We... No, it's not power rule. There's way too much going on for this just to be a straightforward power rule. I don't recognize it. Um, you could try u substitution. Is the top the derivative of the bottom? Is it a natural log? And uh, this one, uh, even though this will work if you do partial fractions, I set this up so that the bottom does factor to uh, its x plus 7x minus 5. But if you look at this, the derivative of my bottom if I were to take the derivative of that, what's the derivative of that? The derivative of the bottom is 2x plus 2. And remember, if you have a fraction, if the top is the derivative of the bottom, that's a good thing because then you're just left with a natural log. And this one, my top is 4x plus 4, but I can make that a 2x plus 2 if I multiply a 1 half through the numerator. And there are some other ways you could get the 2x plus 2 up here, but this is how I'm doing it. If I multiply 1 half through there, then half of 4, that would be 2x plus half of 4 is 2. And then my top actually is the derivative of the bottom. Um, but if I multiply through 1 half on the top, I have to offset that out here. So this problem, um, as soon as I put that 1 half and the 2, now the top is the derivative of the bottom. And my answer is going to be, um, there's a 2 on the outside. 
And the antiderivative of this is simply going to be the natural log of that bottom. x squared plus 2x minus 35. You will get the same thing if you did partial fractions, but don't always dive in to partial fractions just because you see a fraction where the denominator factors. Uh, so a lot of times you can make it a lot easier than it needs to be, or than you can make whatever. Yay, it's almost Friday.